OK, so Pascal's triangle is a very important construction for where we're going next. And it starts off with 1, OK, and comes down like a pyramid. So what you have is that the numbers on the outside of the pyramid are always 1, OK? But any number that is below and between two other numbers is formed and calculated by adding the two numbers above it, OK? So the next row, you'd have 1, 1 either side. And the number that would be in the middle is the sum of 1 plus 1. So the next row would have a 1 and start at 1 at the end. 1 and 2 makes 3. 2 and 1 makes 3. The next row would be 1, 1. So 1 plus 3 is 4. 3 plus 3 is 6. 3 plus 1 is 4. The next row, 1, 1. So 1 and 4 is 5. 4 and 6 is 10. 6 and 4 is 10. 4 and 1 is 5. And so the next row would be 1, 6, 15, 20, 15, 6, 1. The next row would be 1, 7, 21, 35, 35, 21, 7, 1. OK? Now, it is important uh, to recognise how this is forming in patterns. So we've got this 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 down the inner row, uh, the inner kind of uh, triangle, if you will. You've also got this symmetry because you've got 1, 7, 21, 35. You've got 1, 6, 15, and then 20 in the middle. So you've got this line of symmetry going down the middle. That is very important when going forward. Now, what we've got is also a way of calculating these values because these are numbers that we're going to need when dealing with binomial expansion. And in the grand scheme of things, although it can be useful to draw out Pascal's triangle, if we're needing something that is on the 20th row of the Pascal's, or the 100th, then we're going to get into problems. So, how can we find values that are in Pascal's triangle? Well, what actually this, what is actually this representing? It's representing uh, something known as a binostat. Okay, so what is a binostat? Well, a binostat is one of those old-fashioned games where you drop a ball, or um, you might be more used to a coin, drop it into the top, and then it rattles down through the maze, effectively, and what you can deem these numbers to represent are actually, it's actually telling you the number of ways that you can get to each of these positions. So this number over here, this one, there is only one way, one route, that the ball could go in order to get to that position, to fall into that bucket, if you will that is in that position, and that is to go all the way down here. Now for this one, for 7, well there's 1, there's 2, there's 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Okay? So, in each of these cases, it's telling you how many ways it takes to get there. And that's then linking in with this concept of the factorials, kind of that, that, um, that number of ways of arranging the items. Okay. The problem is that there can be some uh, duplication okay, with the counting. And what we have is a formula that takes care of it, OK? So what we say is that if we have 
n items and we are choosing r of them okay what is the number of ways of arranging them and we reference this as ncr now this can be written in a few different ways because it can be written as ncr like that or it can be written as ncr in a bracket almost like a vector and to be honest, I use that one more often than not, okay? The reason being is that it's easier to use that in uh, a formula than necessarily using either of those, okay? So this comes with its own formula that can be constructed, okay? And that is n factorial over r factorial n minus r factorial. Okay? So, that calculates for you actually a position within Pascal's triangle. How does it relate? Because at the moment I've, I've plucked that from thin air. Okay? So it, might, it won't seem obvious as to where it's come from. Okay, so let's see what happens. Now on your calculator, you will have an NCR button. And on the class quiz, it's above the division symbol. So let's try a value. Let's try um, 4 NCR2. Okay, so you would type in 4, then shift division symbol, and it will bring up a C in your display, and then number two, and you get six. Okay, so that's just a random one to choose. Now, what number could that represent? Well, it's actually representing this one here. This is four choose two. Now, let's try some other numbers in here. Let's keep with four, okay? So let's have a look at 4 choose 0. Okay, so 4 NCR 0 is 1. So you have four items, okay, number of ways of choosing 0 of them is 1. Okay, it's kind of like the um, 0 factorial problem again. Now, 4 choose 1, okay, so 4 choose 1 is 4. 4 choose 2, we already know that's 6. 4 choose 3 will be 4. 4 choose 4 will be 1. And you can see that these numbers relate directly to those numbers in Pascal's triangle. And so this top number is referring to the row that you are on. So in this case, you've got zero, the zero row, uh, one, the first row, the second row, the third row, the fourth row, fifth, sixth, seventh, okay? So this number is identifying which row you are on. You've then got the position, this number here, and it tells you how far of the way you're in. Now you must start with zero, one, two, three, four, five. 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, okay? And you can also see that you've got this symmetry, 4 choose 3, 4 choose 1, okay? You're 1 away from 0, 1 away from 4, and you get the same value. You've got that symmetry. Now, actually how this is being calculated, well, if we stick with the 4 choose 2, what your calculator is doing is substituting into this formula. So 4 choose 2 is equal to 4 factorial over 2 factorial, 4 minus 2 factorial. Okay, that's substituting in directly. Now 4 factorial is 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. 2 factorial is 2 times 1. 4 take away 2 factorial is 2 factorial, which is 2 times 1. So, if we cancel, now the 1s won't make any difference. 
you've got 2 times 2, which can cancel with that 4, and you're left with 3 times 2. And so that's equal to 6. And you can see how you can use the formula to evaluate particular values um, within Pascal's triangle. Um, and that is how Pascal's triangle and the NCR formula link together. Now, it will still seem like I've plucked uh, this combinations formula out of thin air. Okay? And this is to do with combinations when the order of choice doesn't matter. Okay, this formula here. So it would be an idea to make sure that you understand kind of where it's coming from. Um, but it is very important that you know how to use that formula and also how to recognize which bits of Pascal's triangle relate to these pieces using the NCR. Okay, so that you can pick out the ones you need at any particular time.